Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am going to share with you today my entire shoe collection from my designer heel collection, my Lux for Less styles, my boots, but I don't want to just share with you the shoes. I want to kind of share with you how I organize them, some of my shoe organization tips, the styles I regret buying, the styles I get a ton of wear off, like some of my favorite styles, the size, the fit, everything I kind of think you should know about the shoes when thinking about building a shoe collection. So, let's take a look. So I remodeled our entire closet last year and when I did one of the things I really wanted to do was organize my shoes. I kind of have boots on one side because they're too tall for the shelf, shoes, heels on this side, some sneakers over there and most of the sneakers I keep in the trunk by the front door. But the way I organized it and I do tend to swap them around and I keep a step ladder hanging over there because I try and do it in seasons and color order. So I know in the winter I'm gonna wear a lot of blacks, a lot of sparkly shoes for Christmas and New Year's parties. And then I kind of keep my ankle boots up the top because I know I can still wear those as well. Then I kind of keep my flat summer shoes at the bottom and then the really, really ones I'm not gonna wear this season all the way at the top are in storage. So, as you can see, I have them all in color order. I have my black strappy sandals together, my nudes, my sparkly, my pink, and then it kind of gets into a bit of a mix because I ran out of space, but at least like there's some kind of organization there as well. The same with I try and keep the strappy sandals together, the sparkly, the closed toe stiletto pumps together, the knee high boots together, the ankle boots together. It just makes it so easy to find pieces because I tend to know what kind of shoe I want to wear once I've got my outfit on. So my shoe organization is by no means perfect, as you will find out as we go along. But I think I'm going to start kind of in the middle with my black strappy shoes, work my way down and then work my way up, then do the boots. I'm going to do everything really quickly. Otherwise, we're going to be here forever. So I really do have a mix of designer and luxe for less shoes. I started my designer heel collection about two decades ago. I think I was about 22 when I got my first pair of green satin Gucci horse bit sandals. And for me, it's more about what the shoes look like than the price. Although I've tried to get a lot more conscientious over the years. Before I was like, oh, I like it, I buy it. I try to be more conscientious now, less fast fashion, really thinking about pieces I'm going to get a lot of cost per wear from. Unless it's kind of like a really fashion forward piece that I'm like, I can't get enough of or that it's on sale. You know, I love a good sale. Okay, I'm going to start with one of my newer designer heels and they are the Gucci sandals. They're crystal. I got them in Ibiza, so duty free. I love my duty free shopping. I got these in a size 36 and a half, so I sized down half a size. Love, love, love these shoes. I style them with black evening dresses. I style them with jeans, with kind of shorts and blazer suits. I just really, really love these shoes. Definitely, I recommend these. They're all, I also find Gucci one of the more comfortable pairs of shoes. If you like quiet luxury shoes, these are the black suede strappy Sarah Flint sandals. She's known for her really comfortable designer shoes. They are logo free. There's literally no logo except for the gold on the bottom. And while the construction is really, really good on these, they have steel and four stiletto heels. They've got the extra padding in there. They're made in Italy. I do think, sorry, Sarah Flint, they are overpriced for what they are. If you have the money to splash on them for basic shoes, they're very, very basic. I have them a ton of different ones because I was sponsored for them for a while. I have them kind of in the nude. I have some pumps by them. I like them for comfort, but they're not as comfortable as I used to find heels. But it might be just because I'm getting old and I'm not finding heels as comfortable. These I absolutely love. I have to say Balmain. I thought these were beautiful leather black sandals. They've got the B there on the ankle strap. They've got the gold stiletto heel. You can see I've worn these to death. So definitely a really, really good pair of black strappy sandals. When I'm looking at designer shoes, I like classic styles, but take for example these. I would rather spend the money on this where I know it's logo, but I feel like it's a bit more of a statement shoe versus these that could be $20 shoes from wherever. Besides the fact you know, you know the quality wearing them. But I find these just as comfortable and I get way more compliments on them. And I kind of feel, I don't know, I wear a lot of gold. I definitely prefer those. If you're deciding between the two, go with those. And then these are probably my most complimented black strappy shoes. And I think they're about 20 bucks because they're Charlotte Russe. Like I said, I'm not a designer label snob. I know what I like. If I like something, I get it. And I've worn this with black dress, with a red handbag, with a red lip, just to tie in all the red. And it just really, really makes a bit of a statement more than a plain black sandal. I'm not really one for plain shoes. Same with anything, right? I like something a little bit extra rather than a plain blue dress. It came with this rosette flower, which I thought was really pretty. Okay, back to the shoes. So these Christian Louis Bouton shoes were 
one of my favorites at the time. As you can see, I had a lot of wear out of them when I first got them. Again, they're a shoe that got so many compliments. Actually, it goes with this. But as you know, if you have Christian Louboutins or you've tried them, they're just not the most comfortable shoes. They kind of give you that toe cleavage because they've got that low vamp, but there is literally zero padding in the soles. They're one of those really pretty cocktail shoes, but you're not running around London or New York in them. And I do think they're very overpriced for what they are. I'm kind of over the red soles a bit at the moment too, but still a beautiful shoe, no regret buys. I've worn these with a lot of different cocktail dresses. These were a couple I wore them with. It, one was kind of like a strappy teal dress and the other one was a very sparkly cocktail dress because I've had these shoes, I think since about 2016, maybe even earlier than that back in my pageant days. And this dress with these was just killer. I think I wore them to a pageant Christmas party or something, but beautiful pair of shoes. Next up, a more Sarah Flint. These are the Sarah Flint gold strappy sandals. Again, they're exactly the same as the black pair. So if you're looking for a basic shoe that's quality, that's designer, but logo free, definitely check out Sarah Flint. She has some really, really good classic styles that aren't going to date they have a couple of different heel heights too sizing does run pretty much true to size and all of her strappy sandals on a 37 which is my normal shoe size and i styled these with everything from gold dresses to black dresses with gold jewelry with white dresses it's a pretty versatile shoe i think everyone should have a black nude white and gold sandal in their shoe collection next up are these white versace shoes i've talked about before i have loved and worn these to death, being repaired again and again. I have the matching handbag. So I'm a big believer in getting matching pieces, not buying individual pieces. So you have a wardrobe full of things to wear rather than a wardrobe full of nothing to wear. So if you can afford to get the matching designer heels and matching designer bag or shoes and bag, whatever brand it is, I would definitely always recommend doing that. Then you automatically have the outfit tied together. I could wear these with a plain white dress, this and this, gold jewelry. It's very, very cohesive versus wearing these and then wondering what bag to go with it or wearing this handbag and wondering what shoes. They go easy done and i've covered the sachi shoes before about that comfort sizing the comfort varies the sizing varies the strappy sandals i'm a 36 and a half in but quality wise these have lasted i god i think i've had these about 10 years absolutely love them next up are my dior j'adore slingback heels slingbacks are a massive trend this year as well i got them in pink because i have so many nude shoes and white shoes i have a ton of pink outfits but not enough pink shoes so i got these because they're such a classic style i think they're so feminine and girly the heel height isn't too high i size down to a 36 and a half though in these so i definitely suggest trying the half a size smaller than your normal size they do have a tiny bit of elastic in the elastic whatever you want to call it in the side but it really doesn't do anything so you really want a good fit in these but these are just such a beautiful classic shoe if you're thinking of one dior shoe to invest in i would definitely check out these as well as their dway slides and i'll get to those later okay these are the newest designer shoes in my closet and they are the versace slingback heels that are crystal encrusted now these are almost a regret buy they're very expensive i didn't get them on now these are almost a regret buy and i hate that because they're beautiful but they are not comfortable they're a bit like the louboutins they look really pretty but for me they're just not really the most practical shoe although what heels are but the least practical of my heels probably and this is actually satin not leather under the crystal so again not very practical it has to be dry weather the heel height is great the sizing was a little odd for me they're a 37 but i'm not sure and again it's one of those i thought they'd go with a lot actually now i'm saying it, it does go with a lot but it's not as much as i thought they would so i kind of want to get the matching bag to this so then i have a cohesive outfit whatever kind of outfit i put these with so if you're thinking about versace shoes try and find these on sale or think about a more practical color and definitely try and try them on or get somewhere with free shipping free returns so you're not stuck with a shoe you can't wear okay next up more pink shoes so these are not amina mawadi they're not mac and mac they're not designer they're actually an amazon buy they came in a ton of different colors and i actually think they were really good value for money i've actually been really impressed with a lot of amazon purchases and amazon shoes good heel height and literally i've worn them loads and there's no really even marking on the satin you can tell by how much i've worn them but just a really lovely pair of shoes and it's a shoe that was super cheap that i get a load of compliments on so i'm not one of these people that thinks you have to spend a ton of money on your shoes next up is another amazon buy i got these two three years ago i can't remember now when these were really really in fashion because I knew they would date, this is one tip I have for you when buying your shoes and investing or not investing in your shoe collection. If you find a style you love, but you think it's going to date, don't waste your money on designer shoes. 
find a Lux for Less version. These are Amazon. They came in a ton of colors. They have the crystal strap. I will say some of the crystals have come off a couple of times and I've just had to sew them back on because it's one long strand so you don't lose them. But they ran true to size. They're comfortable. They're sturdy. Really, really good Amazon find. I'm going to link all of these shoes in the description below. A lot of these, like I said, are a couple of years old. Some of them are probably 10, 20 years old. So I'll try and find a similar style as possible. If I've shown something on here that I couldn't link, drop a comment below and I'll see if I can help you out and find a close match. Okay. On to these. So I'm a big fan of pyramid heels, not necessarily for being classic and stylish, but if you're going to the horse races or a garden party or a wedding, anything on grass or where it's kind of softer or gravel or uneven, or you're graduating, look for that pyramid heel just because it's a lot more sturdy than a lot of other shoes are. And these are Ray, so they are super affordable. The only thing I will say with this brand is they do very, very fashion forward styles, but the sizing is hit and miss. Luckily, you can get them on Revolve, so free shipping, free returns. So if you find a style, order a few sizes, honestly, and just keep the ones that fit. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck again because they do sell out really fast. I find all the styles on Revolve sell out really fast. But even the heel has a lot of padding in, as you can see, and the toe. Beautiful pair of shoes, affordable. They're not a classic pair, but I've had a lot of fun out of these. I've worn these with a lot of my pink cocktail dresses. You could also style them a lot more casually, maybe with some white shorts and a matching blazer, white shorts and a cami, something like that. Okay, we are going on to the whites and nudes. Okay, so we're going on to another pair of Sarah Flint heels. They are the white perfect pumps, so they're the 100 millimeter. I would say if you're looking for designer heels that are closed toe stiletto pumps, definitely check out Sarah Flint. Like I said, they are expensive and she keeps putting her prices up. The construction is really good. The materials are really good. But are they the most comfortable heels? No. But honestly, I think heels are just getting less comfortable for me anyway. I think I spend too much time in my slippers. So I've tended to put something like this inside for a better fit and to make them more comfortable. It's a gel insert, so I can't pull it out because they are sticky. But just to kind of get make it a little bit more comfortable. I wasn't sure whether to get white stiletto heels or if I would wear them, but I've had a ton of wear out of these. I've worn them with dresses, I've worn it with jeans, I've worn it with tailored shorts. They're just, I think if you want a versatile pair of heels that's really classy, elegant and timeless, you can't really go wrong with these. These are Jimmy Choo, they are suede pumps. Now when I got them I was like, that's so impractical, why did I get suede nude heels? But I've actually had more use out of them than I thought I would. I live in Vegas as well so it's dry. So you can see they've literally got no stains, they do have my cat fur on it on them whatsoever and you can see I've had wear out of them. I did size down to a 36 in these though so I do find Jimmy Choo runs slightly large or their styles kind of vary so definitely try and try them on but Jimmy Choo beautiful shoes I do not regret buying these because they go with everything. Okay next up I'm kind of embarrassed to show you these because they are really busted up but from a distance they look fine and as soon as the platforms are out of fashion again I am going to get rid of them because they're also not the most comfortable but they were expensive. They're Sergio Rossi and they are absolutely gorgeous with all the crystals on there. So normally platform heels are pretty comfortable. Because this is such a skinny stiletto heel, it doesn't give you the stability that say something like this does. So this is obviously a lot more comfortable, a lot more stable. These you're not going to be walking around in so much, but they are absolutely stunning. I've worn these a lot under gowns, which is why I haven't been so worried about them looking dirty because you can't even really see them except for maybe this little bit when I'm walking because I'm so short. I kind of need the highest heel possible under my evening gowns. But you could wear this with a cocktail dress. You could wear it with pretty much anything. Really pretty. Always think like if you want a nude strappy sandal, yes, like the Sarah Flint ones I have are very practical, but they're more casual. I do like a statement shoe like that. And then I have these sparkly beauties. I don't even know the brand. Lauren Lorraine, I don't even remember where I got these from, probably Bloomingdale's or Macy's or something like that. They were, at the time, they were pageant girl shoes. I wore them with my white cocktail dresses, with my sparkly cocktail dresses. Um, I should probably get rid of them soon, but whilst platforms were in, I just wanted to kind of keep hold of them, see if I get some more wear. I haven't worn them this season, so that means they're probably going to hit the donation pile. Okay, once I start getting down to the bottom, these are the kind of shoes I'm not wearing so much, but I don't want to get rid of because, yes, these are old, but they are a really, if I'm doing a lot of walking, these are a really good heel height. They're also chunkier. They're really easy to swipe down. I like the kind of the gold detailing on there as well, and they're dead comfy. These I've talked about before in my Versace shoe collection video. Absolutely, oh my god, the most beautiful shoes. Absolutely adore them. But I like I said before, the Versace shoes, the sizing's a little bit off and they're not the most comfortable. 
I didn't get as much wear out of them as I thought I would again. I got these back probably back in 2017, back in my pageant days, because they had the crown on. I mean, they do have the padding. It's just the fit wasn't great on them. And I don't know, the heel shape was just a little off for me. So I really haven't worn these as much as I wanted. So I'm going to have to say they're a regret buy. And these, you can see how much wear I've had out of them. These are Fendi high heels. I got them on Rodeo Drive years ago, but I haven't got rid of them just because they're such a classic style. And once your feet are in there, you can't see that anywhere. The bows are cute. The heels, kind of a good height heels. Just a really classic sandal, black strappy sandal that's kind of a bit more statement making than a lot of others. Back to Sarah Flynn. Okay, navy stiletto pumps. Don't necessarily know if you need these in your high heel collection, but I thought at the time, with navy coming back, it's a bit softer than black. It's still classic, so I'm trying to find a navy blazer so I can tie everything together. I think a little navy blazer with a white button-down shirt, maybe a blue navy blue pleated skirt might look really, really cute with these. But again, I have never worn these. So for me, they are kind of a regret buy. And I will say in Sarah Flynn, I went down to a 36 and a half in these ones. Okay, on to the flats all the way at the bottom. I've done a whole review on these. The Christian Dior Dway Slides. I wasn't sure whether to spend this much money on flat shoes, but I have had a ton of wear out of them. They did take some breaking in because they rub around there in the beginning. So use band-aids, take band-aids out with you. Maybe the first week you're wearing them, especially if it's hot and humid. But like put it around your toes so they don't rub there. Once they're broken in, honestly, I really, really like these. I got them in navy and white because they go with everything. I have the white Lady Dior bag. I have the navy and blue Twilly so I can tie everything together. Just a really, really good shoe if you're looking for a designer flat. And then I have these and they are not Hermes. I'm not too proud to say they are Steve Madden. Like I said, I have a mix of designer shoes and a Lux for less. The reason I didn't buy Hermes and I bought a cheaper brand was because I feel like you really can't tell the difference. And I did review the Hermes around sandals as well because I really wanted to see if there was a huge difference in quality for the price. I do think you're really just paying for the name and I'm sorry for saying that. Don't want to offend any brand. These are a size seven. I find they around true to size. I find them comfortable. Save yourself some money, get the cheapies. Another pair of flats I have now, ballet pumps are back in style. I don't suit a lot of ballet flats. But when I'm wearing a pointed toe ballet flat, if you're short like me or you're more muscular like I am, look for a pointed toe rather than a round toe. It's slightly more elongating, slightly more flattering. And I just like the red. It goes with black. It goes with blue. It goes with white. It goes with pretty much everything that you would wear black or white or nude ballet pumps with. Tie it in with a red handbag to tie your look together or some red lips. It's actually a lot more practical color than you would think. And I like the statement pieces on here as well. I like the rock studs. Just makes it slightly edgier, slightly more different. Now these, I'm almost to tell you, embarrassed to tell you where, where they're from. They are Shein. And I think they were under 20 bucks. And they are so comfortable. You can see the padding on there is really, really good. They've got an adjustable strap on there, so they fit really well brilliant pair of shoes for the price and I know I shouldn't be supporting she and I know they're kind of fast fashion but here we are and it's a non-issue collection review let's go back up okay we are up to the point of needing a step ladder so where do I want to start logically okay Ray another pair of Ray shoes very similar to the last one I got these for the summer because I thought they'd be good for the races again because of that heel for any events on grass just a really really good shoe I've started with shorts I've started with denim I've started with like little girly floral dresses really good basic it's a square toe which I'm not the biggest fan of but being a fashion editor fashion blogger I have to kind of have more on-trend pieces as well so they are fine these Sarah Flint again, they are the nude leather sandals, same as the black. I'm not going to go over it. If you need a good basic, check out Sarah Flint, as are these. Now, if you need one pair of really good quality shoes in your wardrobe, I would say the nude over white stiletto pumps because I think you're going to get more use out of them and you can wear them pretty much all four seasons. And I've had so much wear out of these. And you can see the support, arch support in there, which is really, really good on them. I do like the gold plaque on the bottom as well. I think that's classy. These are a 37, which I said her sizes are a little bit all over the place too. And then these, which are I regret buy. I kind of got suckered into buying leopard print stiletto pumps because everyone's like, you'll get so much wear out of them. It's good to have a statement pair of heels that you can wear just to zhuzh up a pair of jeans, add a bit of you know flair to them rather than just boring black shoes. I wanted to love them. They're just not really me. I don't think I'm a leopard print girl. I've worn a lot of leopard print dresses before, 
but the shoes just aren't hitting the mark for me but you can see the construction is brilliant she does have the kind of grip soles on there versus a lot of shoes design especially designer shoes have the slipperiest soles and you have to resole them but they're not my biggest love more sarah flynn oh my gosh these black ones i have had a lot of wear of they're 36 and a half so in sarah flint's pumps i tend to wear my normal size in leather and size down half a size in suede i don't know why but anyway these are the black suede shoes they're kind of a bit softer looking than leather they look great with your office wear with your work dresses with jeans with black dresses okay one of my favorite most worn stiletto heel pumps in my designer heel collection is my christian louboutins which is probably my first i want to say my first louboutin shoe i ever got i love black heels what made me buy these over another pair of plain black stiletto pumps was the detailing on the front i thought that was a bit different so yes the red bottom is a statement you can tell they're the designer shoe but it was that that really separated it for me because I like something a bit different. Now, the next pair of shoes I was sold on as soon as I saw them in the window. We were walking around Venice, Italy in the, in the window display, so duty free. How cute are they? I just thought the sparkly silver sole was so pretty. I can't believe I was sold on a sole. That wasn't it. But even the lace detailing on there was gorgeous. And then all the way around, it has this crystal detailing that I thought was just so pretty. The only thing is, I have not worn these as much as I thought I would. I don't, I mean, the heel is high, but there's something about this shoe that makes me not wear it as much. So it is, for me, unfortunately, a regret buy. They are Rene Calvilla. Calvilla, I'm not quite sure how you say that. I would try more of her shoes, though. I do find them quite comfortable. They are a 36, so I definitely find they run big. I need to find more ways to wear this. If you have any ideas for me how to style this, besides a black cocktail dress, drop them in the comments below because I definitely want to wear these babies. On to the next ones, which I found years ago on the Real Real. I'm not too proud to shop on, on pre-love stores either. I love the Real Real. I love Fashion File. Anywhere then they can guarantee their authenticity. And they're slightly different because they have on the back this gorgeous, their bamboo shape they're famous for but crystal encrusted is zipper and then it has the ankle support on there so it's a really really good kind of supportive high heel and I just thought they were really lovely they're black satin you could wear them with any kind of evening dress you could wear them with jeans you could wear them with black wide leg pants I've had a lot of wear out of these and I did actually have them resold as you can see a lot of shoes I will have them sold before I've even worn them with some kind of grip because so I'm not slip sliding all around the casino's carpets okay let's keep going up so up towards the top I've put some of my summer shoes I got white platforms a couple of years ago I would not necessarily suggest buying these now I think the trends on its way out but I got a lot, of, a lot of use out of them at the time they were Aldo they were cheap and cheerful easy next up another pair of ray white shoes now I would definitely say Everyone needs a pair of white strappy sandals in their shoe collection. And I got these again because the summer shoe, I'm on the grass a lot. I go to the horse races. These are just really, really practical. I like the strappiness. You can see a nice little summer pedicure. Really good, affordable shoe. These I got because I got them before I got these. I'll do a two for. Because I couldn't get into the square toes for the longest time, I got these first. Really, really love them. Where are they even from? I don't even remember. They haven't even got a name in them. Probably somewhere really cheap and cheerful. And then I got these afterwards. They're Vince Camuto. Vince Camuto, I do find I size down half the size in these. They come in lots of different colors. A really good summer shoe. But this just gives me options. They're slightly different shades of nude too, depending on how tanned I am. One of my shoe tips I will say for your shoe collection, if you can afford to do it, is to have a few shades of nude just because I feel like our skin tone changes a lot throughout the year. And obviously the most flattering elongating color is gonna be the one that matches your skin tone the most. Okay, right on the top shelf, I have my ankle boots because that's kind of the style I'm wearing the least right now. Okay, so these ankle boots were absolutely fabulous. I love them at the time. I've kept them, I haven't got rid of them because I feel like they're out of style right now, the peep toe ankle boots, but I feel like they might come back in fashion and I had so many compliments on these. I'm trying to find a good way to show them to you. They're just absolutely gorgeous. I think they're a really, really good glam pair of shoes. Another pair of ankle boots are these ones, and I loved these. I haven't got rid of them again. I haven't worn them much. They're Hervé Leger. They are a size 36, so I sized down a full size in these. But I loved the gold detailing on the heel. I loved the cutouts on there and the peak toe. I just need them to come back in fashion for me to wear them. But I tend to hold on to my designer shoes rather than throw them away because I don't want to have to invest in them again when they come back in fashion. I have the room to store them. So why not? Another pair of ankle boots are these pink suede ones. I loved them when I got them. I haven't worn them again in ages. 
just because I haven't really been wearing jeans that much. I was wearing them with blue denim jeans or white jeans, but I haven't been wearing jeans, so I haven't been wearing these, but they still have some life in them. They're top shop, so I'm going to hang on to them. Okay, onto my knee-high boots. So obviously black knee-high boots I feel like are a absolute shoe essential. It depends on the style you have. I have square toe because I got them last season. The softest leather, they're just ray. They are a size 6.5, so a size down half a size. Now these are what I definitely suggest getting to be able to store your boots neatly. They're from Amazon. All you do is roll them up, stuff them in, because otherwise they flop everywhere, right? It is a bit time consuming. I would love to say I do this with all my boots every day. If I know I'm wearing them the next day, I tend to not bother, honestly. And then just put them in and then they will stand upright. So then you can store more shoes. Another pair of knee-high boots that are probably my favorite, most worn, and I think you need in your shoe collection too, is a pair of black knee-high boots. These are actually slightly over the knee, but look at the pearl details in there because they're Karl Lagerfeld. They do have that pearl aesthetic and I have been asked if they're Chanel before. But obviously Karl Lagerfeld felt is a lot more affordable i've worn these loads and the suede has held up really well so definitely get yourself some good suede protector and if you don't want to do suede if it's too impractical for where you live and your climate i still think every woman should have a pair of black knee high boots in their wardrobe flat and high heel oh i missed a pair of ankle boots because they weren't up the top because they're too tall to fit on the shelf these are so fun they're so not me but i got them because i try and push my comfort boundary sometimes and these are a size seven ray again because i'm sponsored by revolve i get a lot of shoes from them i just thought these were cute i've actually worn these with black jeans a lot and with black leather pants when the black polo net sweater turtleneck whatever you call them a really really cute way of kind of like adding a little bit of a statement to your outfit okay these boots are absolutely beautiful i was so color that sold me on these and they're the softest suede they're actually michael kors which i don't buy anymore but i don't want to get rid of them and i love the gold zipper on them i've worn them loads look at the suede it's held up really really well just such a beautiful color as well i think it's fun to have if you have room and the budget for it to get a pair of boots that are a different color to what you'd normally wear just make sure you have something else in your wardrobe to tie into whether it's a handbag or something else so it's a pair of shoes you're actually going to wear not just something that kind of sits there and looks pretty now when i like something i tend to get it in multiple colors like you know from sarah flint and as I did with the Ray Knee High Leather Boots, I got them in cream as well because I don't always want to wear black. Sometimes I'm wearing a pink dress, like a pink sweater dress. The black looks too heavy, especially coming into spring. These work just as well. So I think it's good to have a pair of cream boots as well as black. Or two pairs of cream boots. These are one of my best sale finds ever. I got them for $49.99 from Express. They are Express boots. They are the softest suede. Now what's cool, besides looking a bit Chanel-esque with the toe cap, this toe cap is a game changer and a lifesaver because if this was cream suede, can you imagine how dirty they would be? This really helps protect the shoe. They are a size six. So I sized down a whole size in this. I don't have any other Express shoes to be able to compare sizing to, but the boots I sized down a whole size. My husband is going to come home and be like, what the hell happened in the closet? Because there's shoes and boots everywhere now. White cowboy boots. These are a pretty recent purchase. I loved cowboy boots. I was never brave enough to wear them. But because I'm doing so much fashion now, I really wanted to, like I said, step outside my comfort zone, wear things a little bit more on trend. And I got a lot of use out of these in fall, and I'll probably get a lot of use out of them again in spring. Styled with denim shorts, with a little floral dress, with a summer dress white boho dress they're just really really easy the heel height's good and these were amazon so i think they were about 50 bucks these are another pair of michael kors boots like i said it must have been at least 10 if not 20 years ago i went through a phase of buying a lot of michael kors and because they've lasted i haven't thrown them out i'm very into not fast fashion but if you've got something and there's nothing wrong with it classic styles you can still wear keeping them why throw them away and what made these brown boots last longer a bit like the cream ones is having that leather toe cap. So if you're looking for shoes that are in paler colors or suede, definitely keep an eye out for features like that because it does make them last longer. Obviously, I have a trusty pair of these because who doesn't? Warm, comfy, I've worn them around the house. I throw them on to run to the grocery store. These are my Chloe boots. Again, I've had these at least 15 years because I've been married 15 years and I got these before I met my husband. And they are just these gorgeous burgundy Chloe boots. I got them from a consignment store when I was living in London and working as a personal trainer. Just the softest, softest leather. The heel height was really good. It's a really fun boot. I love it with jeans. I've worn it with leggings a lot, leggings and sweater dresses. And I tend to wear them a lot in London still, especially on a rainy day, running around London because they are comfortable. So definitely I recommend Chloe as a brand for your boots to check out.
Do you want to see my sneakers? I wasn't sure whether to share them with you or not in this shoe a collection of share, but I think I will. So these are my newest sneakers, if you can call them sneakers. They are Converse newest style, and that's their wedge sneaker. And I'm liking this. There's quite a few styles in here that aren't my usual style, and that means I'm trying new things and not stuck in a rut, so that's a good thing. So I like these. I love a wedge sneaker because it's a way of wearing a more casual look without having to wear a flat because I like to cheat all the extra inches I can. I size down half a size in these. I would suggest sizing down a fuller size. Now, one of the things I like about this is it does have a thicker sole. Sometimes Converse don't have the most comfortable soles. These are more comfortable because they're thicker. Like I said, I love a wedge sneaker. I haven't worn them probably for over a decade, but I kept hold of the Nike wedge sneakers because these are limited edition. They were the rose snake skin and I thought they would come back in fashion and I didn't want to get rid of them because I knew I wouldn't be able to get them again. Now they're coming back in fashion again. I think I'm going to be popping these beauties on. Probably this time not with leggings or skinny jeans, but maybe with kind of a little summer dress. These are the two white sneakers I have. Now again, I think white sneakers are a wardrobe essential in your shoe collection. I have one Nike Air Force One and one the Vayers. They're just a very different look. I know they're both white leather, but these are definitely more classic. I tend to wear them if I'm traveling. I tend to wear them as an airport shoe. This I tend to wear if I'm kind of just wearing loungewear, running to the grocery store, or want something a bit edgier, fresher, if I'm working with sorority girls to look a little bit more youthful. We are on to the last two pairs. So these are a pair of white combat boots, again, from Amazon. And you can either wear it with or without the pouch. So the pouch was really, really popular a few years ago. I took it off because I was traveling. I didn't want anything too bulky. I'm actually going to pop them back on now because I did like the aesthetic and it is big enough for a credit card. So when I was out hiking, I tended to wear these. Yes, I wore these hiking because they're a heel and they're comfortable enough and the tread is thick enough to do that. The pouch actually fits a tissue, a credit card and a mini lipstick. So that is a winner. As you can see, I've had tons and tons of wear out of them. I think they're about 25 bucks and they're probably again one of my most complimented shoes these are the very last pair of shoes they were a gift from just fab years ago i really haven't worn them this season because like i said i haven't been wearing ankle boots and jeans as much i haven't thrown them out because i do think it's a classic style that will come back around into fashion a couple of pairs i miss because they were in storage are these castaner wedge espadrilles brilliant summer shoe and gladiator sandals which kind of come in and out of fashion but i like the look so which are my favorite and which are my least favorite shoes? Okay, my favorites, I'm sorry, it can't be just one, is going to be the pink Versace slingbacks, the black crystal Gucci heels, my white Versace sandals, and my Dior Jador slingbacks. Okay, let me know which your favorite ones in this collection are as well. My least favorite shoes are probably these white ankle cowboy boots. But I'm going to keep hold of them because I think they've still got some wear on them. That is it from my shoe collection. Let me know the favorites in yours in the comments below. Which ones you liked of mine, which ones you think I should get rid of. And I will link everything in the description below. If I don't, let me know and I'll help you find it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe.